Hey guys, let us continue with our second part of Unnamed and Rights Quality Series. So we'll start with the Article 21. We already completed the Article 20 in the first part. So no person shall be deprived of his or her life, life or personal liberty except according to procedure established by law. We cannot take someone's life unless until that person has the, uh, got some death penalty or something. Right now, what are the criteria and what was held in the AK Gopalan case and what was it proclaimed in Menaka Gandhi case? Arbitrary executive action. So, it was available against the arbitrary executive action in both the cases. Whereas, arbitrary legislative action was earlier not available, but later in Menaka Gandhi case, it was available. Unreasonable, unfair and unjust laws can be questioned by judiciary. And then due process of law, it was not available earlier in Gopalan case, but in Menaka case, it was available. And then meaning of liberty, it means only liberty relating to person, body of the individual. Here they gave a wider and positive interpretation of liberty, that is opportunity to live with dignity and to develop to one's capacity. So this is about opportunity to live with dignity and develop one's capacity fully. Now what is the difference between due process of law and procedure established by law? Due process balances the power of law of the land and protects the individual person from it. A law that is duly enacted by the legislation or concerned body is valid if it has followed the correct procedure. So in due process, it balances the power and protects the individual also. Whereas in case of procedure established by law, we have to make sure that not just the legislature is valid or not but also it has followed the correct procedure or not is also being looked at here now next one is article 21a it talks about the right to education state shall provide free and compulsory education to all children in the age group of 6 to 14 years in such a manner as state may determine so according to the 86th constitutional amendment act right to education was framed right under which all the kids from 6 to 14 years were given free education and compulsory education so rte 2009 was enforced and article next one is article 22 it talks about the protection against terrorist and detention grounds to be informed so if we uh, if someone is being getting arrested then the ground for arrest should be informed and they have a right to consult and defend it by a lawyer. They can consult a lawyer. And right to be produced to a magistrate within 24 hours, excluding the journey and holiday. So they even have right to be produced before a magistrate. Shall not be detained for, for some period, for more period than authorized by magistrate. Right. So magistrate given certain uh, judgment or something after which they cannot be detained now what is this preventive detention a person can be detained for three months under a preventive detention law beyond that so if police has a doubt on certain person that they might uh, cause instability in the society or they they are a kind of threat then they can be detained to prevent certain bad happening, right? So this is called preventive detention. So three months a person can be held like that. After that, advisory board must be formed and that board must give permission to detain that person. The board shall consist of judges of high court. And Parliament by law increase the period of preventive detention for more than three months without opi obtaining opinion of advisory board. So, but still this did, that, that didn't come into practice. So, Parliament by law they extended the period about three, three months. Then, legislative power with regard to preventive detention is divided between the Parliament and state legislature. Both of them can do so. Now, right 
limited in sex exploitation article 23 and 24 23 talks about prohibition of traffic in human being and forced labor it's available against state and private citizen so state can impose compulsory service for public purposes without any discrimination on the ground only on religion race caste and class so rrcc someone cannot be like state cannot imp- imp- impose compulsory service so sorry state can impose compulsory service without discrimination on certain grounds like religion race caste and class this is called prevention of traffic in human being and forced labor and article 24 talks about prohibit employment of children below the age of 14 in hazardous industry so it does not prohibit child labor in non hazardous industry so children can be employed in non hazardous industry and family occupation like that particular family or the store or something that children can help their parents so child labor protection and regulation act 2016 it prohibit all kind of employment of children below 14 years 14 to 18 year children in hazardous industry now the next one is right to freedom of religion article 25 to 28 article 25 talk about freedom of conscience freedom to profess practice and propagate religion it does not provide right to religious conversion so one has prov- right to practice his or her own religion without disturbing others like they are allowed to convert but forceful conversions are not allowed then it covers religious belief and practice hindus under article 25 include under article 25 hindu means it covers hindu sikh jain and also buddhist reasonable restriction can be implied based on public morality public order morality and health state can also regulate economic political activity associated with religion it can provide welfare reforms of religious institutions so we all know indian secularism is different from western secularism so state can provide help to all religions equally now article 26 talk about, talk about religious denomination it can establish maintain manage and acquire property for religious and charitable purposes what is the necessary condition by supreme court the system of belief so they they should have certain system of belief and also common organization and distinctive name should be there and the next one is article 27 freedom from taxation of religion institution tax cannot be levied but fees against service can be levied so we cannot co- collect religious tax it cannot be made compulsory but in case of fees because certain temple they ha- they have ticket for entry such thing can be allowed fees can be levied but tax cannot be levied this article prohibits only levy of tax not a fee So next one is Article 28. It talks about the freedom from attending religious instruction in educational institution. If someone is not interested in attending a religious uh, instruction in school or college, they can like no one cannot force them to attend it. Not applicable to an educational institution established by the state, but requiring imparting religious instruction. if something is like a part of religious institution and there the religious instruction will be pro- uh, taught we cannot do anything other in that but in case of state institution no one can force anyone to attend a religious meeting or anything now we have to know the difference between educational institution and religious institution what is that okay what in which of the educational uh, institution religious instruction can be allowed or not for example wholly maintained by state if it is wholly maintained it's completely prohibited in case of institution administered by the state but established under any endowment or trust for example ramakrishna mission if it runs a school then the religious instruction are permitted there 
then institution recognized by the state in such case it is permitted but on voluntary basis student may or may not attend so voluntarily they can do student have the right to right not to attend it then institution receiving aid from the state permitted on voluntary basis student may or may not attend so these are some of the various kind of institution and the kind of restriction on it now the next right is 29 and 30 cultural and educational right article 29 talks about any section of citizen residing in any part of india having distinct language and culture shall have right to protect the same collective right so article 29 it talks about the right to protect the cultural uh, cultural right or the collective right so it is a group right it is available for both linguistic and religious minority so it's available to everyone and no citizen can be denied admission into any educational institution maintained by the state or receiving aid from the state only on grounds of religion race caste or language if someone is not having in a mark or based on merit if someone is given admission or not given admit admission which is okay but if you are giving not giving admission to uh, a kid because of religion or race then it is a crime and also the article 29 it covers both the minorities and also the majority as pronounced by the supreme court it includes both majority and minority now article 30 it applies only to the minority not to majority so this include right of minority to establish and administer educational institution available to religious and linguistic minority so they can establish their own educational institution these institution enjoy right to property reservation for obc that is as per the 93rd amendment it does not apply to these institution we already saw obc reservation applies to all private institution also but does not include the minority institution right it is applicable only to minority institution so minority institution alone can seek an exception and then article 32 it talks about right to constitutional remedy it is a basic feature of constitution parliament can empower any subordinate court to issue writs of all kind so article 32 talks about right to constitutional remedy this is a basic feature of the uh, constitution and the parliament can empower a subordinate court even to issue it as of now we only have supreme court and high court to issue it president can suspend the right to move to any court for enforcement of fundamental right during the national emergency and then dr b r b r ambedkar he he called the right to constitutional remedy as the soul and heart of the constitution and it can be issued by both sc and hc to enforce fundamental right hc under article 226 and supreme court under article 32 now what are the writs its meaning locus standi and against whom so locus standi is that a person he or himself who is affected he or himself has to file a suit or case which is called locus standi habeas corpus of course the person is lost so other person only has to issue it so it does not apply locus standi does not apply it means show me the body of or the find a missing people if someone is missing and if you have some doubt on the executors itself we can give habeas corpus private citizen or public authority it can be issued against both now ma- mandamus meaning we come in to get the job done by an authority it applies that is only the affected person can issue case right it is available only against a public official prohibition it means forbidding or to stop the lower court proceeding further in the case of their jurisdiction so supreme court or high court they can prohibit the lower court 
so it applies only uh, the locus standi applies and then judicial and quasi judicial bodies are only covered in this then certiorari to be certified or to be informed or transfer a case due to excess of lower court jurisdiction which is called certiorari meaning to be certified again locus standi applies this also issued only for judicial and quasi judicial bodies and then co warrant to by what authority or prevent unqualified people taking office if someone without any qualification taking a public office then that can be prevented by co warrant to it does not apply anyone can apply uh, fight against this so uh, local standi does not apply any public authority unqualified for the position now next one is article 33 so according to which parliament can restrict or abrogate fundamental right or armed forces paramilitary force police force intelligence agencies so state legislature cannot do so so reasonable restriction are given or parliament can restrain the people in services or forces like armed force military force etc members of armed force are also included uh, other service provider to the armed forces for example if someone is working as a carpenter or cook of that particular armed force member then they also come under or covered under article 33 then article 34 it talks about the it provides for the restriction of fundamental right by martial law is in force so when military law is in force fundamental right can be restriction martial law is not defined in the constitution and then concept of martial law this concept was derived from the britain it refers to situation where civilian administration is run by military authority instead of like executive or elected executive military will do the rule it empowers parliament to indemnify any government servant or any other person where martial law is in force so habeas corpus is not automatically suspended even if martial law is in force habeas corpus cannot be suspended. now what is martial law national emergency defense martial law it affects only fundamental right where is in case of national emergency it affects not only fundamental right but also center state relation distribution of revenue and legislative power both center and state and may extend the tenure of the parliament so this is what about national emergency it affects fundamental right and also other things like federal relationship revenue legislative power etc and martial law suspend the government and ordinary law court whereas in case of national emergency it continues the government and ordinary law court it is imposed to restore the breakdown of law law and order due to any reason it can be imposed only on three ground what are they war external aggression armed rebellion and then it is imposed in some specific area of the country it can be imposed only in a specific area but this can be imposed either in whole country or part of it also allowed it has no specific provision in the constitution so it is not mentioned in constitution it has specific and detailed provision in the constitution it is explicit whereas martial law is implicit article 35 it talks about the parliament not only has power to make law to give parliament sorry parliament only has power to make law to give effect to certain fundamental right and ensure uniformity so in case of state also given equal power then each state will have different kind of rights right so parliament only has power to make law so residents can be made at a criteria for public employment so this is an exception under article 16 only parliament can do so then to empower court and other supreme court and high court to issue writ orders direction for enforcement of fundamental right and under article 32 under 32 it can even allow certain lower court to issue writ parliament then to make law to take away fundamental right for armed forces paramilitary and police they can take away the fundamental right of certain forces under article 33 then 30 34 indemnify the act of government servant during martial law 
and then parliament can also make law for punishment of offence declared under fundamental right example untouchability trafficking for which parliament can enact separate law also the article extends for competence of parliament to make laws on few matters specified in state list status of right to property was repealed by 44th amendment act now it is legal right under article 3 and it a we already saw this now we have only six fundamental right because right to property was made a legal right right to property earlier it was in article 19 except for minority educational institution so still the right to property right is available for minority institution in case of minority institution government is getting their property then government has to provide proper compensation now there are certain exceptions to fundamental right what are they article 31a it prohibits by category of law from being invalidated for violation of article 14 and 19 so five categories of law can be made inv- invalidated if it violates 14 and 19 so all these things are covered in article 31e they are related to land reform industry and commerce and include acquisition of state management of property amalgamation of corporation modification of right of director and shareholder then modification of mining leases so under these provision under the five category they are being invalidated if it violates article 1419 land reform to acquisition of state and management of property to modification of mining lease it does not emanate state from state law from judicial review unless reserved received president assert for reservation so even state laws does not get exception from judicial review until and unless they got president assert now article 31b talks about it saves act and regulation placed in ninth schedule from judicial review if certain laws are placed in ninth schedule it cannot be interfered by the court In IR Kolho case, the Supreme Court stated that laws placed in ninth schedule after 24th April 1973 comes are are open to challenge in court. Article 14, 15, 19, 21 and basic section. So in the IR Kolho case, Supreme Court held that the uh, things which are placed in the ninth schedule after 24th April 1973 can be questioned by the court because. the judicial review the basic structure and the court cannot stop it judicial review was part of basic structure article 31c it is brought by the 25th amendment act 1971 it states that article 39b and 39c can override article 14 and 19 so in case of giving priority article 39 and B and 39C can be given priority over Article 14 and C, 14 and 19. This has been pronounced in Article 31C. So, what are the rights? So, these are some of the uh, fundamental rights from Article 14 to 35. Now, what are the rights available outside Part 3? They are not fundamental right, but still they are the constitutionally guaranteed legal right. What are they? Article 265. no tax can be levied or collected except by authority of law only government has power to issue or get law tax and then article 300a it talks about right to property article 301 it talks about the trade commerce and intercourse throughout the territory of india and then article 326 it talks about the right to vote and note that article 226 high court have red jurisdiction of these right so fundamental right chapters broad points all the important broad points have been covered now we will cover the next topic which is fundamental duty so fundamental duty is are given under article 51a part 4a part 4 talks about dpsp after that we have fundamental duty under part 4a what is the source ussr So, Swaran Singh Committee, nineteen seventy-six, recommended eight fundamental duty. Then, finally, we uh, took ten fundamental duty, and one more fundamental duty was added later during an amendment. 
so what is second amendment included 10 fundamental duty in the constitution what are the features of fundamental duty some were moral and some were civic confined only to citizen and they are non justiciable now we will look into the list of fundamental duty first to abide with the constitution respect its ideals and institution to cherish and follow the noble ideals to uphold and protect the sovereignty unity and integrity to defend the nation to promote harmony and spirit to value and preserve the rich heritage to protect the natural environment to develop scientific temper safeguard public property excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity providing opportunity for education of children in the age group of 6 to 14 years so this was the 11th fundamental duty which was later included by 8 to 6th amendment act earlier all the 10 were included in 42nd amendment this 11th one was introduced after the RTE Act. Remember these and observe the fundamental duty that overlap with DPSP. So this is for comparison. We have to compare it with DPSP and we must remember them. So that's all in fundamental duty. Now we also will also look about the amendment of the constitution. So amendment of the constitution can be done under article 368 part 20. Now, what is the source of amendment of the constitution? So, we took this particular aspect from South Africa. Parliament have authority to amend the constitution. Article 368 gives procedure and power to amend the constitution. Bill can be introduced either in the house of Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha, but not in state legislation to bring uniformity. We have not allowed state to amend the constitution. And it can be introduced by the ministers or even private member can initiate an amendment suggestion. No need of prior permission of president. Bill must be passed by each house by a special majority. Since it is constitutional amendment, special majority is needed. Each house must pass the bill separately. To amend federal provision, in case of federal provision, that is if it affects state also, then half of the state legislature assembly must ratify with simple majority. In case of USA, as we already saw, three-fourth ratification is needed. But in case of India, half of the state need to justify or ratify it by simple majority. And the president must give assent to the bill. So this is how the amendment process takes place. Now what are the types? Simple majority of parliament. What does it mean? Majority of the members present voting. So majority of the members present and voting shall accept. So in case of simple majority, majority members have to be present and they just have to vote and accept. So these are covered under amendments outside Article 368. That is if it is not a constitutional amendment, we can do so. But in case of constitutional amendment, special majority is important. Special majority means two-thirds of the members must be present and voting. And more than 50% of the total house should be present there. By special majority of parliament, that is this particular step, along with it, consent of half of the state legislative assembly with simple majority is also needed in some cases of federal importance. Now what are the constitutional amendments which can be done by simple majority? So in case of creation of new state under article 3 or admission of new state under article 2. Then in the schedule 256, 256 the schedule. These can, uh, all these schedules and then judiciary like number of judges to be increased or decreased, power of supreme court to be extended. Then legislature. In legislation like the amount of quorum required, language, privilege, rule of procedure, salary, emoluments of MPs, election, delimitation, abolition or creation of legislative council. Then in case of union territory, creation of legislation and elected executive. So all these things comes under simple majority to form a new state or to increase the number of churches and to increase the quorum for which simple majority by parliament is enough but in case of special majority 
all the provision which are not covered under simple and special majority of state special majority along with state all these things come under special majority example fundamental right dpsp it does not involve state still special majority of parliament is needed then special majority of parliament along with consent of state it includes election of president extent of executive and legislative power of union and state seven schedule representation of state and parliament amendment of article 3 state itself so all these things require states say also so that's all in this part thank you